So welcome along to this presentation from Digger Data on the EMS suite. Um, we will look at an overview of this product. Uh, if you have any questions about myself, you can find that at the URL that is displayed on the screen. The important thing to remember here is that this free EMS training is provided exclusively uh, through Dicker Data. You can contact Dicker Data via the email address microsoft.sales at dickerdata.com.au. That is the uh, best option to go in there and contact Dicker about anything relating to the Microsoft Cloud products, licensing, and especially the EMS suite. Of course, you can contact uh, the BDMs directly. You've got Aaron in the Northern region with those contact details and Daniel in the South looking after that. I will repeat this slide towards the end of our presentation. Now with that, let's get into the meat of our webinar. So we are going to be here to talk about the Microsoft EMS Enterprise Mobility Suite. What is the Enterprise Mobility Suite? Well, it is a combination of products that will manage for you things like identity, devices, applications, and security. The way that it does that is by providing additional resources for you in the form of four major products. The um, connection is uh, Azure AD Premium, you also get uh, Microsoft Intune, you get Azure Rights Management, and you get Advanced Threat Analytics to cover off the security. So the important thing to remember, if you take nothing away from this webinar, is the fact that EMS is a suite of existing Microsoft products, which potentially you could buy on your own, but are bundled together into the package, and they include Azure AD Premium, Microsoft Intune, Azure Rights Management, and Advanced Threat Analytics. Now, why are these products so important in our new technology landscape? Well, what we're seeing is the fact that users now don't reside within the boundaries or the confines of an office environment. They're typically roving around uh, inside the business, but also outside the business on mobile devices on non-desktop devices. So that means that we need to provide additional uh, facilities to manage and secure that. Now, the first thing that we need to do when it comes to users is the ability to identify them, who they are, verify that they are the person they're claiming to be, and then also manage their ability to get to resources. Now, underpinning this, the way that we do this is typically with something called uh, the local AD, the uh, you know, AD server. But because we have users now roaming around, um, connected to the internet, outside of business, we need to have that identity management in a cloud application that can reach the users wherever they are. The way that we do that is with uh, Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft uh, Azure uh, identity underpins things like Office 365, CRM, and you get a basic offering when you use those products. But to really take it to the next level and closely identify and authorize your users, we need to implement something and the features of Azure AD Premium. Now, once we've got our users under control and identified, we then need to manage the devices that are, they are using. Typically today, what we see is that devices are not limited solely to a desktop environment. What we're seeing is, is we're seeing that uh, people are bringing their um, own devices to an organization. So they're bringing their own iPad, their own phone. They want to be able to use that inside the business because that's their favorite device. Um, and that device will typically have applications and data that are personal, and then we need to add corporate uh, information and data and apps over the top of that. How do we manage all that? How do we control that? What happens to the information that's on those devices? What happens if those devices are lost or compromised? So the product that we provide that with from Microsoft is Intune. So Intune gives us the ability to apply device policies to control the devices. Now, not only that, uh, Intune gives us the ability to apply policies to the applications that reside on the devices. So, SkyDrive, for example, sorry, OneDrive, for example, has a consumer version and it also has a commercial version in OneDrive for Business. 
that is accessed now through a single app on a device. So how do you control the ability for users to be able to get to their personal information, but control what's sent through their corporate information? Again, using a tool like Microsoft Intune, we can apply policies and control not only on the device, but we can also apply that on the applications and the data that is actually resides on those devices. Now, the third option here is that we have the ability to now control our data. Typically, data has resided in a file share on a server which has been locked down and permissioned and restricted by IT corporate policy. Unfortunately, uh, users are sending documents outside the organization via attachments. They're sharing them on file share, Dropbox, uh, copying them on a USB and sending them off to people. So this means that the permissions generally don't travel with the document. So if you, someone sends an attachment of a confidential document accidentally to somebody in a distribution list, well, there's nothing to protect that document. Now with Azure Rights Management, you can protect that document no matter where it, where it lives. So if that document is taken out of a local file store, attached and sent to an incorrect uh, recipient, Azure Rights Management will encrypt the document, will ensure that that user cannot open that document without uh, appropriate authorization. Now, when we combine all these three together and also add in the advanced uh, threat analytics, we get the enterprise mobility suite. So these products certainly can be purchased standalone, but the value and the benefit is purchasing them together as a suite of applications. So well, let's have a look at the features a little bit more in depth on each feature. Let's drill into Azure AD Premium. Now, as I mentioned, the important thing now is, is we need to manage identities in things like Office 365, CRM, and also non-Microsoft cloud-based apps, Xero, Quicken, uh, Salesforce, all these uh, applications are being consumed from the web by users throughout the organization. How do you control that? How do you manage all of that? We also typically still have an on-premises Windows Server Active Directory, which manages our internal network. We also potentially have other directory services, maybe Linux boxes that are using LDAP directories, uh, and again, third-party um, applications and products that need user management. Finally, you'll see that we've now got not only PCs, but we've got our devices. We've got phones, we've got tablets, we've got them inside the organization, outside the organization. Um, inside the organization, we can probably manage them with our local ID, but once they go outside the organization, how do we do that effectively? The way that we do that effectively now is to work, is to implement Azure AD. Okay, so Microsoft Azure AD provides the ability to not only synchronize identities from our local on-premise environment. So we can take users who are already in our Active Directory, copy them, their properties up to Azure AD, and then we can share those identities with uh, products like Office 365, CRM, and non-cloud-based applications, which we'll come to. So it means that your users can log into their desktop with one login that can be synchronized to Azure AD in the cloud. Like that same login then will log them into Office 365 and non uh, Microsoft apps as well. And of course, we can also use Azure AD as a control point, as I mentioned, for the identity and management of our PCs and our devices. Now, Azure AD is part of a lot of the Microsoft uh, applications already in the cloud. So if you've got Office 365, you've already got a basic version of Azure AD. That comes with a number of benefits, as you can see on the extreme right. So you can do a lot of the things that Azure provides with the Office 365 environment for free, but you'll notice some key differences here, especially down the bottom, which is where the Azure AD premium features come in and provide benefit. So some of the things to call out here is the fact that one of the big benefits of Azure AD Premium is it gives you password write back. So that means that if a user changes their uh, password on premises, by default it will synchronize one way up to the cloud and be the same. But if the user changes their password in the cloud, that by default is not sent back to the on-premises environment unless you have implemented Azure a Azure AD Premium here. You'll also see that you get additional power around multi-factor authentication. You get uh, what's called Cloud App Discovery, which we'll go into. 
You also get, um, uh, again, connection health. And another important feature is self-service group management. So that means that you can allow users to create their own security groups. They can manage them themselves. They can allow other users in and out. So it doesn't have to be IT that's managing these groups completely. The other thing to notice here is under the um, single sign-on uh, portal here, you'll see that Office 365 gives us a limit of 10 applications per user, whereas the premium version, there is no limit, and that will become important in the next step. So what you may not be aware of is that users can log into an Office 365 portal to get access to the Office 365 services, but they can also log into the Azure AD portal directly as well, which is part of um, Office 365. So they can log into that and you can, as a reseller, can configure that so that when they go into this single sign-on portal, you'll see that they not only get access to the Office 365 applications, Okay, so basically what they'll get access to is the Exchange and the SharePoint by default. But in this case, you'll see that the GoToMeeting, the Dropbox, Evernote, and Microsoft OneDrive have been configured for this user. Now you can configure the apps for each user individually. You can control them as an administrator from a central portal. And importantly, what you can also do is you can then using the back-end administration, you can monitor and determine how much usage those applications are making. So importantly, not only can you set up a portal, manage, maintain, and configure for Microsoft applications, but also for third-party SaaS-based applications as well. Now, the portal supports over 2,500 um, existing SaaS-based apps with more being added every day. So you'll see a lot of commonalities here. You'll see things like Evernote, Box, uh, Yammer. You'll notice the uh, corporate application Netflix down here is also supported by the portal. So as a reseller, you're able to set this up for a client, incorporate and integrate all their existing SaaS-based apps so that when users log into these, they log into it using a single login, which comes from Office 365, which is synchronized with their on-premises environment, which means they need one login to access all their data, which again reduces the identity management overload that we see today. Now I mentioned that Azure AD Premium also comes with a feature called Cloud App Discovery. The problem that we have today is we have lots of people using shadow IT and using applications from the cloud inside a business because they're so easy to use, configure and set up. The problem is, is many businesses have no idea that users are using these third-party apps and potentially sharing information with uh, third parties. So what we do with Cloud App Discovery as part of Azure AD Premium and uh, Enterprise Mobility Suite is we install a small agent on all of the workstations and devices. And then what we see is we get a nice report that shows us what applications are in use, what are authorized, which are being used by the users from their portal, the authorized ones, and which ones are unauthorized. So a good way to demo this or talk to clients about is to actually go in, enable the trial of the Azure AD Premium, uh, install Cloud App Discovery, let it run for a week, and then come back and show the management, the reports. And I think you'll be pretty, they'd be pretty surprised to see what cloud-based applications are actually running in the background here. So it allows you to do a great discovery and point out that, well, that's interesting. Did you know that your use, that 50 of your users are using Dropbox and they are sharing three gigs worth of information in a week? Uh, that's what the Cloud App Discovery can give you the ability to report on. Now, Azure AD Premium has a lot more features, a lot more functionality, but to sum up, it's uh, ability to manage your identity and the access control from a single pane of glass across multiple uh, applications. So your Office 365 CRM uh, on-premises, we can do it all from a single pane of glass via the cloud. We can control and manage our applications, Microsoft and non-Microsoft, all access through a portal that a user accesses via a single login and password. They don't need a unique login and password anymore for all their applications. So for example, if you have a customer who uses a shared Twitter account or Facebook account for posting information about the business, you can set it up so that account is accessed via 
each user's individual Office 365 login and password. If the user leaves the business, their Office 365 account is disabled, they can no longer access that Facebook account. They don't know the, the they don't know the login and password because that is pre-configured in the portal. They never have access to that. And importantly, it gives you this ability to uh, put more compliance over the business processes and the advanced access. You can really control and see what's going on, especially when it comes to the cloud-based applications, what's actually in play, what's being used, how much data is being shared, which users are actually using these applications. Another advantage of Azure AD Premium is the enhanced multi-factor authentication. So on the left-hand side, you'll see the uh, features that are built into the standard multi-factor authentication for Office 365. And then on the right, all the additional features that are provided with the Azure AD Premium. So you get additional security reports. You get the ability to block and unblock users. You get, uh, again, all these confirmations, fraud alert, all these additional features that are incorporated in the Azure AD Premium. Also with Azure AD Premium, you get additional reports. So in Office 365, you get a very basic level of reporting, uh, determining users when they log in perhaps. But in here, as you can, might not be able to see, but you'll have a look when you get the slides. We can look at password reset activity. We can look at who's, uh, self, who's managing the, the groups, if we've turned that on, uh, what applications are in use, uh, passwords that are being rolled over. So all of those reports are automatically lit up when we go to the Azure AD Premium offering. Another advantage, like I said, is because now we have full password right back, what that means is you can create, uh, which built into Azure AD Premium, a password reset portal where users can simply click on a link. They can then be uh, verified as the correct identity using um, a phone or multi-factor authentication or an email confirmation. They can then go in and reset their own password. So we've got a slide a bit further down, but I think a vast majority of uh, support calls to a service desk are about password resets. If you can eliminate that, or you can reduce that, which you can certainly do with the password reset portal that's built into Azure AD Premium, then that's gonna save you a lot of time and effort that can be better spent uh, when it comes to managing and developing a user's uh, IT infrastructure. Don't forget also in all of this, one of the big changes that we're seeing in the environment of late is the ability to directly connect Windows 10 devices to Azure AD. Okay, so we can do a, effectively a domain join of our Windows 10 devices to Microsoft Azure. This enrolls them in device management. This gives us the ability to push down policies, to control, and going forward, this is the future where the AD to a large extent is now moving to the cloud because the devices are now able to uh, roam anywhere. If you then synchronize that Azure AD to your local on-premises AD, users using the same identity no matter where they are on-premises in the cloud, and you've got full control of those devices and especially when it comes to Windows 10. So let's turn our attention now to the second uh, pillar of Azure, uh, uh, the EMS suite, that being Microsoft Intune. So Microsoft Intune, gives us the ability to manage not only devices, but our applications. So built into Office 365 is the ability to control which devices get access to our environment, um, controlling those devices, pushing down policies, so ensuring that they have uh, a pin number set, a password, the devices are encrypted, and Office 365 also supports the ability to do selective wipe. So we can uh, elect to wipe the corporate information off those devices while retaining the personal data so we can manage the corporate data. That's included in Office 365, but if you want to extend that into application management and more features, you need to look at adding in Windows Intune. And again, that's built into the EMS suite and is an add-on uh, to things like Office 365. So now with Windows Intune, we can control policies around the devices. We can control things like certificates, their Wi-Fi profiles, the URLs they browse to, as well as managing which applications are pushed out to the devices, which applications are valid. And we also get the ability for users to do self-enrollment. So there's no need to go in and have it sent to IT for it to join the network, put the right policy, uh, put the right applications on. This basically can be done by a user through a self-enrollment portal, which is part of the Windows Intune environment. 
So again, there are a lot of applications now that support mobile device management. Most of these which people are interested in is around the uh, email. So if you have a mobile device management turned on, uh, it will basically only receive a single email. It'll say you need to enroll your device. Uh, when the device is enrolled correctly and it is approved, the policies are then pushed down and the corporate email will flow. You can also now manage uh, the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, the OneDrive for Business, and you can set up policies using Intune, for example, that says, okay, when a user opens a corporate uh, spreadsheet, they can't copy and paste this information into an email, even into their own personal email, and then send it to a third party. So using the power of Intune, you're able to go to such a granular level with these devices that you can effectively restrict the copying and pasting of corporate information outside the organisation. So that's one of the many benefits that uh, Windows Intune does provide. Here's a table that will give you an example of the features that are provided in each solution. So the very basic starting point for controlling devices has always been Exchange ActiveSync. And that gives you some basic requirements. We then add on mobile device management, which is part of Office 365 um, already. And you'll see that allows you to do things like, um, you know, determine whether it's jailbroken, uh, apply policies. But then when you add Intune, you'll see that you get the ability to do self-service company portals, to provision certificates and VPNs. And I suppose the biggest differentiator is when you look at the bottom of the table here under PC management. So Windows, uh, Microsoft Intune allows you to manage your PCs, your traditional PCs, their inventory. You can control, uh, you can roll out malware, patching policies. And again, if you integrate Intune with something like System Center Configuration Manager, you can actually roll out uh, full uh, OS deployments to each, indiv each individual device. So again, remember, you have a number of base features built into Exchange. Some more features are added by Office 365, but an even greater amount of features and control is added by Intune. And certainly these are services that clients are requesting because they are becoming more and more mobile every day. So Office 365 will give you basic mobile device management. It will allow and control conditional access to your Office 365 environment out of the box. It will also control what devices can connect to that environment. So if they don't meet security, if they don't have pin locks, they aren't able to connect to your environment for corporate data. They also support selective wipe out of the box, which means you can wipe uh, corporate data, but not personal data. But when you add Windows Microsoft Intune over the, over the top, you get full mobile device management, which means you can deploy certificates, Wi-Fi profiles, VPNs, and again, you can control the email profiles so they're automatically pushed out to the device once it's enrolled, nothing that the user has to do. You also get mobile application management. You can provide the ability to identify the application, specify what are valid, which URLs that they can browse to using the browser environment on mobile devices. And the, one of the big differences is around the PC management. Now with Microsoft Intune, you can manage down to the traditional desktops, okay, which we could never do before. You can push out policies, you can control things like the Windows firewall, and you can control that across an organization, no matter where those devices reside, whether they're inside your organization or floating around somewhere on the internet. So let's turn to the next pillar of our EMS suite, which is Azure Rights Management. Now again, rights management is built into Office 365, but the EMS suite, and the, which includes the Azure Rights Management, gives you some important additional premium features. So the first feature you'll see the difference here is that it can integrate with your existing on-premises file server and utilize what's called the file classification infrastructure. So you can set up um, rules that can say, okay, when I see a document that has the word confidential inside the document, I want you to automatically apply rights management to that. I want you to protect it, to encrypt it, and to re um, reduce the amount of people that can actually access it. So again, Windows on-premises has the ability to do the file classification infrastructure. Azure Rights Management can extend and integrate with that. So the documents on-premises and in the cloud support that same environment and the same rules and structures you've set up. It also gives you two important features. Uh, the first is the ability to track the use of the document. So 
imagine a user takes a document from your local environment, attaches it as an email, sends it on to a third party. Um, how do you know who's accessed that document? Where actually is that document? How many copies are there? Um, who's read it? Who's taken bits out of it and reused it? With Azure Rights Management, you can control and manage and view what's happening there. And the last one here is you have the ability to re revoke access to the document. So maybe you send out a tender to six people and what happened is, is one person's come back and been successful. You can then revoke access to every single document that you sent out because the um, process is now complete. So even though the users had access to it for a short time, you can immediately uh, revoke access to it using the Azure Rights Management. So how does all that really work? So think about Azure Rights Management as the ability to not only to take a file and encrypt that file, it also then provides access control or permissions inside the file so that means that the permissions actually travel with the document. They're no longer dependent on a file server system or a file structure to do that. And the third option it gives you is a phone home ability. The document um, maintains and reports back its uh, tracking ability. So you can see who's open, who's closed, successful and unsuccessful. Now, remember that all of this uh, rights management is controlled and using the identities that you already have in your organization thanks to the Azure Active Directory, which again can be integrated into your local existing on-premises directory. So I think there's a big call these days for the uh, ability to restrict control uh, and permissions on documents no matter where they travel. So inside an organization, that's fine, but documents these days spend a lot of their time traveling outside the organization. How are they kept secure? So here's a good example that we'll run through, just give you an idea of how the RMS works with people outside your organization. So let's say that a sender obviously creates a document uh, on their local device. Then what they're going to do is they're going to determine which person I'm going to send this to, who has the rights to open it, um, how long that that document can be viewed, whether it expires, whether I, the uh, creator, will receive email notifications when that document is accessed, and what permissions they have on that document. So even if I send them a document, I can control whether they can open it, view it, print it, all those sort of things. So once I've done that with encapsulated in Azure Rights Management, which is pretty straightforward, there's lots of plugins already into things like Outlook. I then send that document, it's then managed by Azure Rights Management, no matter where it is. It's sent to the first user who's the legitimate user. They log in using RMS credentials and it's verified. They can open the document and the sender gets a report verifying that all is good and the user has seen that. Now let's say that that user then forwards that email attachment onto a third party. That third party who is not authorized for that document then tries to access that document and is denied, which is great. But the added advantage here is, is that that denial is reported back to the sender. So the sender knows that an attempt was made to try and open that document. Now all of that is reported in the Azure RMS portal. So here's an example of a single file here. So at the top here, uh, basically we have the name of the file and it's, it's being tracked. You'll see that we have uh, when it was revoked, when it was reshared and information about when it expires. And our first column here indicates how many views have taken place and how many users have opened that and there are all their details. We also see here that there have been nine denied requests. So the file has been attempted to be opened nine times and has been denied because they didn't have the appropriate rights. And then we have the activity here. So we can actually see the times and the dates that all this activity transpired for this individual file. Even better than that, the portal also gives us the ability to geolocate uh, where these uh, actions were taking place. So we can see here the users that have viewed the documents, we've all be able to see who have been unsuccessful and who have been successful. So again, it can give you that ability to track the information right down to uh, a location anywhere on the globe just about. The final pillar of the EMS suite is a little different from the other two. Uh, it's an on-premises solution that helps you provide better security around your organization. Now, that product is called Advanced Threat Analytics and it has a number of key features. One of the big features is it supports 
mobiles out of the box. So it will support the mobile devices that you have connecting to your environment. It integrates with the existing event management systems. So things like event logs, it will then uh, able to access that and read through that. So again, event logs have a lot of useful information and generally you never need to look at them, but in there will probably be the one warning or the one flag that is the thing you need to see if there has been an attack. Again, uh, advanced threat analytics can start pulling that information out for you. And again, it's a pretty seamless deployment. And again, it's not going to be intrusive onto anything that you already have in place. So the way that it works is you basically install uh, the uh, software and what it does is it then monitors the identity traffic that's happening with your AD. So most of the vulnerabilities occur when there's an escalation of privileges. So uh, somebody's privileges, uh, login and password get stolen and then used for the wrong thing or used in an inappropriate way. So you'll see here what it does is that it remains invisible to the attacker, it looks at all the AD traffic, so all the identity traffic flowing backwards and forwards and and also collects all the event logs um, from your Active Directory, so title, group memberships and whatnot. Now it will then start learning, and this is where the power of advanced threat analytics comes in. It uses machine learning um, from the cloud to be able to analyze uh, behavior patterns. So when you think about it, most people have a very consistent pattern. They come in at the same time, they open their emails, they then maybe go to a directory they were working yesterday, they work on a file they were working on the day before. They're generally doing very similar things. So this analysis, will run in the background and will look for behavior patterns and build a knowledge base of how your organization and how your users work. Now, when it sees something that raises a flag here, something different, then it's going to flag that using the advanced threat analytics for you. It's going to say, that's interesting. We have a user here who's logged into their desktop, but their mobile phone is also trying to log in with an incorrect password, but it's doing it from a taxi in another state. We think that's a problem. So it's providing this machine intelligence to make these decisions without someone having to sit there and monitor that for you. And the way that it presents it for you is in a nice console, very much like the social network feed. So on the right hand side, you'll see examples of the feeds that appear in the console. So you'll see that there's the top one here is a green indicating it's all good. Uh, then the bottom one here, we've got an suspicious activity. So it looks as though they've logged in, this user has logged into their desktop and there's been seven unsuccessful attempts to log into a mobile device. So it's gonna flag that as an item that does need review. So remember that what Advanced Threat Analytics is doing on your network is looking for things like weak protocols, known protocol vulnerabilities. So it's looking, using its database, it's cloud learning. It will look for ways that attackers use the uh, vulnerabilities in the software to uh, exploit uh, escalation of privileges. Things like uh, pass the ticket, pass the hash, all of that, it's looking for those sort of signatures and will alert you in the network. But importantly, it's looking for abnormal behavior. So the reason, imagine if the NSA had something like this, it could have detected that all of a sudden, someone called Ed, Edward Snowden is suddenly downloading and copying huge amounts of data when normally he never did that day to day. So again, it, it's looking for these patterns when things fall outside a pattern. And the way to think about this is if you've ever had um, the dreaded call from the bank that says, um, have you been using your credit card in a country where you're not? They're using similar technology, machine learning to look at the transactions you have in your credit card and flag any results which may result in fraud. So again, in essence, think of the Microsoft Advanced Threat Analytics as very much the same sort of uh, technology here. So that covers all the products we have in the uh, Enterprise Mobility Suite. So let me just dive in quickly and look at some partner benefits for you quickly. So again, one of the things I noted here that was important was that studies show that over 40% of help desk calls are generated by users forgetting their passwords. Okay, so you would have to have a technician attend to it. You'd have to potentially have a delay while they get to the ticket, reset the password. Uh, the solution here, thanks to EMS, is the ability to create a self-service password reset portal, whether they on premises or whether they connect to Office 365, you can set up a portal they log into, they put in uh, the fact they've lost their or forgotten their password. They're then verified via a phone call or an SMS or an email to verify they are 
a warning password reset, and they can manage the whole thing themselves. There's no need for help desk interaction. And finally, you will get a report in the premium reports that the user has gone through this process. The second thing here is we have the example of many, many organizations where users have to leave and join certain groups. So if a new person uh, comes onto the marketing team, what groups do they need to be added to? How does that happen? When does that happen? But if you give the users the ability to, to do their own group management, so the marketing manager is responsible for adding the new marketing person into the marketing group, then it's done. The, uh, the help desk doesn't have to do it. And again, it makes it much easier because it's all managed from a central console. It's all reported and you're allowing users to do self-management, which again is going to reduce the calls and the overhead for customers to um, a support help desk. Finally, as we get more and more devices, users are bringing, you know, one Monday morning they roll up with a new phone and they want to connect it to the network, they want all their emails on it, they want all the applications and access to the data. Um, that could take a good while for IT to sit down and set up. But with EMS, you can set up a self, uh, service device enrollment, the user logs in um, to the logs into this portal and they get the message in an email. They click through the prompts, the machine is then, the device is then verified to make sure it conforms with policies. And once that is correct, then the information is pushed down, the device is configured and the user is then able to access their data all without the need for IT to be involved once the policies have been set up. And when that device then leaves or is retired or is stolen or whatever, that all the information can then be uh, uh, removed from it, can be wiped from it, uh, whether that's selectively to leave the personal data or the whole device is wiped to ensure that it is completely secure. So all of these are solutions and options that can provide benefit to customers and also to resellers and are products that uh, can be sold by resellers as the, some of the benefits of the Enterprise Mobility Suite. But importantly, there is a lot more resources that I haven't covered in here, a lot more options that you can talk to customers about and configure for them and then generate additional service revenue for yourself. So some references here again, uh, the slides will be made available to you after the fact, so no need to um, write all these down. Uh, again, there are plenty of them, but we'll come to some more training options very shortly. So as we're rounding up here, getting towards our time, what are your next steps? So after looking at today's webinar, I certainly hope that you've got more information about what EMS is. EMS in summary is uh, Azure AD Premium, uh, Microsoft Intune, Azure Rights Management, and Advanced Threat Analytics. But we have a special offer available from DICA only. So again, only available from DICA is some additional free online training. Now to encourage you to dive in there and learn more in depth about EMS, um, there is a complete EMS training uh, online available in the uh, DICA Data Digital DISTI Bootcamp. And the incentive is the first people who uh, go through that, watch this webinar, do all the training, uh, and then answer the 25 quiz questions correctly. You do need to get all 25 correct. We'll receive a $100 Visa gift card. So again, that is now available to you and certainly encourage you to go in there and make sure that you are one of the first 30 people to get that free Visa card. So dive in there and start that immediately. You can also go in and enable the EMS rights you have as a partner. So you get internal use rights as a partner. So as long as you have action pack or better, you will have rights right here, right now to enable EMS inside your organization. So the best way to learn about it is to implement it, use it yourself. The best way to show customers is to implement it and show it in operation. So remember, that as a partner, you have access to internal use rights when it comes to EMS. So you have the ability to do document management using um, Azure Rights Management. So you can encrypt your quotes that you send to clients, so only the client can open it, and then you can revoke those quotes so that if the client takes your quote and then on sends it to another reseller, they can't open it. So uh, there's a single benefit for implementing the internal use rights of EMS. And the final thing here is now go in and start 
speaking to your customers about the benefits that EMS provides. Once you've done the training, once you've started using it yourself, I'm pretty confident you'll start seeing the benefits that would apply to a customer's business. The password write back portal, the ability to encrypt documents, the ability to control devices, to have them self-enroll. And if you have clients who need that advanced level of security, you can have basically a Sentinel using machine learning sitting in the background monitoring who's accessing what and if something untoward is happening. So they are your next three steps, I would suggest. And as I've mentioned here, this training, this webinar, this uh, DISTI Bootcamp portal is available only thanks to Dicadata. So again, they've made it free and you can reach them for general questions, support and help on anything using microsoft.sales at dicadata.com.au. Uh, again, hit up Aaron if you're in the Northern region and Daniel if you are in the South. So hopefully that's covered um, all the uh, areas, giving you a brief overview of EMS, giving you interest in the package, help you understand how it's a group of products that work together that can be added on to give the additional functionality, the premium abilities that um, you're probably already seeing in Office 365. So with that, I'll thank you very much for attending. If you do have any questions for me um, that you've seen today, feel free to contact me directly. But again, I thank you very much for attending this session.